Speeding up your WordPress website isn't simply a case of slapping a caching plugin on your site and hoping for the best, but caching plugins do play a significant part in helping you speed up and optimize various different aspects of your site. Today, I'm going to be testing several very popular options out to see how they fare in a head-to-head -head test on the exact same website, a website that uses several of the plugins that are covered a lot on my channel. Now, before we take a look at the site and what's being used on it, let me just say that any of the premium plugins or services that I use today are not sponsoring this video and haven't given me the plugin or access to the service. I'm paying straight out of my own pocket to be as unbiased as possible. Which one will come out on top is going to be a total surprise to me as much as it will be to you. So without further ado, let's take a look at the site and how it's set up and then start testing these plugins out. So this is the site we're taking a look at and it's one I've created in a previous video and it's probably very similar to what a lot of us would be using. It's a blog based website, images, search function, some custom fields, you know, those kinds of things to give you a benchmark for a site that's a little bit more customized than just generally your typical blog site. So as you can see, we've got a range of different recipes. There's lots of images on the page itself. We've got a nice strong image at the top, all those kinds of good things. Jump over to the plugin section. As you can see, there are a lot of plugins installed in here to get this full range of functionality. So you've got things like Advanced Custom Fields Pro, Anywhere Elementor Pro, Custom Post Type UI, Elementor Custom Skin, the free and the pro version, Elementor, Elementor Pro, Facet WP, the Elementor plugin for that. We've got Rank Math SEO, Search WP. We've got some WordPress importers, WP Reset, backup plugins and so on. So a typical kind of setup you'd have for a more comprehensive site. If we also take a look then, we'll jump over to GT Metrics and let's get our benchmark on there. So the site is already inserted. I've set this up to be using Chrome as a browser based in the closest to my server location, which incidentally is SiteGround based in the UK. So the servers in the UK and we're using this on the London UK connection. Everything else is stock and default. So we're going to run a couple of tests just to kind of get a full benchmark to see where we are with this. So let's just analyze the site, let it run through. And like I say, we're going to do three tests on each one of these, like I've done with the WordPress themes sort of speed test I did probably about a year ago now. It's going to give us a good overall average benchmark. Okay, so there's our results. As you can see, not too bad a starting point. We're using the Hello theme if you're wondering what theme we're using. And we've got a page speed score of 71% and a Y slow score of 89%. But taking those out of the equation, what we're kind of more interested in is the page details. 2.5 second load time, which is fairly respectable for a non-optimized site and a page size of just under 1.5 megabytes with 65 requests to the server. So not a bad starting point, but let's use this now. I'm gonna run a couple more tests on this to get my benchmark, and then we're gonna take a look at installing the first of the caching plugins, which is going to be WP Rocket. Okay, so all three results are in for the clean and plain site, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now. I'll do the sort of like the tests and results towards the end of the video. But what we're finding is there's not a huge difference here with this the plain site. There's probably between one and two seconds difference. Everything else is staying the same across the board, which obviously it would for the file size and the requests. Those things are not gonna change on a site by site basis. So first up, we have WP Rocket, which is probably a very, very popular plugin for helping speed up your WordPress website. And one that I know a lot of people on both my channel and also inside the Facebook group are using. So I'm interested to see exactly how this fares. And like I said at the top of the video, this has been purchased out of my own pocket. So if I find this one comes out on top, I'll definitely be using it on some personal websites. So let's just log into my account. Once I've logged into my account, I can grab a copy, as you can see, Purchased this yesterday, July the 6th. We'll download it. Once that's downloaded, then I'll install it into WordPress. Okay, so that's now activated. And if we scroll down, we'll see we've got WP Rocket at the bottom. Okay, so WP Rocket is all ready. Now let's just jump into the settings and take a quick look. But what I'm primarily going to do is I'm going to take this from someone that doesn't really know what they're doing. So we're just going to let the plugins kind of go with the basics. You could tweak these and I might come back and take another look at some of these in further detail later on down the line. So if you'd like to see more details about WP Rocket, for example, and those kinds of things, when we take a look at configuring things a little bit more, let me know in the comment section below as always. 
Okay, so let's just close all these messages down a second. So if we take a look at the settings page, you can see what we have. And from someone that doesn't really know what they're doing, this could seem a little daunting with all the options, but let's just take a look at what we can do with this. So the rocket is now activated and already working for you. So your website is loading faster. Okay, let's just check this out. So we'll just clear the cache to make sure that we're starting completely fresh and everything should now be done. So let's go and take a look at this now in GT Metrics, run those three tests and see where we are with the baseline figure with WP Rocket installed. See what kind of difference we get. We'll let this run through now. So all the same settings are in place, server location, what I'm using, what browser I'm using and so on. And let's take a look at where we end up with this once the results are in. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. These are the initial round of results. This is the first time I've run it. As you can see, our page score has well, hasn't changed. Neither is our Y slow score. They're both exactly the same as they were, 71 and 89. What has changed, though, is the fully loaded time. We've dropped over a second on average. Page size, negligible difference, you know, 100 kilobytes. That's about it. And requests have dropped by one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this three more times to get a, a completely out of the box install get those results then we're going to take a look at some of the simple things we can do as you can see the first thing that pops up is to serve scaled images that's the thing that's kind of killing our page speed score so we'll take a look in wp rocket and see what options are inside there now this is basically a first look for me because i've never ever used wp rocket in my entire life so i'm going in in the same way as you may be if you've never used this so you're getting my first reactions my experience of going in there and digging in and seeing what are available. So let me say, let me just run through this test two more times to get those initial results. Then we'll take a look at what we can tweak to see if we can get better results from it. Okay, so let's hop back in to the dashboard, take a look at WP Rocket and what we can start to adjust. So this is just taking the default options. Let's take a look at some of these options we have on the left hand side and see what I think the typical user could easily tweak to just make some alterations and potentially get some more performance. Caching, let's take a look in there. So you've got things like mobile cache. If you have a separate application for mobile devices, you could enable the separate cache. Most of us probably aren't gonna be using that. Then you've got user cache. It's a great way to have user specific or restricted content on your website. So if you're running something like a membership site, you may want to enable caching for logged in WordPress users so they get the benefit of cached information when they're logged in. Now we can control things like the cache lifespan, how long it's going to stay and so on. File optimization and media is probably where we're going to do most of those tweaks. So let's take a look at file optimization. As you can see, we've got things you'd normally expect, things like minifying your HTML, minifying your CSS files and so on to get rid of the white space and things that can just take up a little bit more space on those files. It's worth bearing in mind that it's Worth testing these out, but you can find sometimes this can cause issues on the front end of your site if you minimize, minify things, especially JavaScript can have a little bit of an issue when minified. So if you find your site has a problem, chances are it's going to be these when you change them. And what I would highly recommend when you're doing anything to do with caching and optimization is to try things out one at a time you know don't go and just change tons and tons of settings and then go back because then if there is a problem you have no idea what's caused it so each one of these settings like for example file optimization will check the options inside here try those refresh the site and take a look before we move on to media for example so i'm going to say i want to minify the html the css files and you see this says this could break things so bear in mind that if you have a problem this could be the reason why. So we'll say activate that, activate that. Combine CSS files, enable minify CSS files to select. And what this means is if you have a theme that you're using sort of multiple CSS files and you could have something like CSS hero, which would use a different CSS file, and you could even be using your own custom CSS files. This will group them into one minified file, which should cut down on a few different things, including the number of requests you get sent to your server and so on. So we'll try that out. We'll say, yep, let's do that. And again, activate combine. It just tells us. So it's nice to see WP Rocket is telling us, look, this could cause a problem. So be careful. You can also manually exclude files if you want to inside this area. So that's quite cool to see if you know that there are files that you do not want to minify, you know, CSS files, or you don't want to combine, you can choose which ones are not going to be affected. 
And we've got finally optimize the CSS delivery, eliminate render block in CSS on your website for faster perceived load time. Again, let's check that. And you see you've got fallback critical CSS. So before we move on to JavaScript, let's save this and quickly take a test run to make sure that the site is still working as it should do. So we'll save the changes on there. We'll jump over then onto the site once that's saved and we'll take a look by refreshing this just to make sure that everything is loading as it should do. Now, the other thing you probably want to do is come back into WP Rocket, come back to your dashboard and we'll say clear the cache just to make sure that we are looking at a live version of this site. So you can see it says critical CSS generation, CSS generation is currently running two of eight page types completed. Refresh this to check it out. So we have things going on in the background being compiled by WP Rocket. We have to kind of wait for those things before we're going to see the full on results. And we just have a couple of things in there. So we'll refresh that and see where we are within the process. There we go. All eight have now been generated. So now we'll just come in, clear this cache one more time just to make sure. And then we'll jump over to our food blog and we'll refresh this. And if we find anything breaks, we're going to know where it's coming from. So just looking at the home page, everything looks pretty good. Let's go and take a look at one of the other pages. So we'll view the recipe page, for example. There we go. Everything is looking good there. We'll take a look at an individual recipe and everything looks to be working exactly as it should do. So those changes, they haven't caused any impact upon what we've done with the website. So we can come back into WP Rocket, go back into our caching, into our file optimization. We know that the Minify HTML and all those things are all working. Let's try now with the JavaScript files. So you can see we've got remove jQuery migrate. So removes the jQuery migrate, eliminates a JS file and can improve load time. Minify your JavaScript files and load JavaScript deferred. So we'll try these ones. And again, you get that. Are you sure you want to do this? This could break things. And this is why I say always make sure you go through the process of testing before you commit. We'll say combine those. And again, we'll say yes to that. And then the final, we've got load JavaScript deferred. So we're just going to try these out, see what happens. If we find something goes wrong, we can just put things back. If we find things slow down, we can put things back. So we'll save the changes on there. We'll let that run through what it needs to do now to save things. And again, you can see it says uncached page has now been preloaded, refresh to see the progress. So we'll refresh that. And there we go. It's still go through the process. So the final thing I want to do is come back into our dashboard, clear our cache again, just to make sure we're looking at the live version of this. So preload complete, everything is now cached. So we're going to come back in, go back to our homepage, just to check everything is working. So I'm going to force refresh this. And as we can see, everything is looking fine on the front end of the site. Now, obviously, you'd spend a lot more time testing things, just to make sure that your things like your filters and all those kinds of things are working. So you can see we can Test this out. We're filtering down so that we know that the, the JavaScript inside there and the Ajax and everything is all working fine. Hit view recipe. Come in, we can take a look at the recipes. So everything appears to be working perfectly fine. So let's come back into 3P Rocket. We've done our cache, we've done our file optimization. Let's take a quick look now at our media options. And inside there, you can see we've got lazy load. Now, lazy load is just basically going to only load images when you start to scroll down the page and get close to them. So if you have a website that has a lot of images, which is what we have with this particular website, that could play a big part in getting better results. So let's just say enable that for images. I'm not going to worry about iframes and videos because I'm not using any of those on this particular site. Emojis, we'll say disable emojis, we'll leave that. Disable WordPress embeds. So this prevents others from embedding content from your site, prevents you from embedding content from other non whitelisted sites, and removes JavaScript requests related to WordPress embeds. Up to you. If you want to use that, test it, see if it makes a difference. Okay, so we'll save the changes on here. What we're going to do now is we're going to just do the same again. We're going to come back to our dashboard, clear our cache, jump over to our site just to make sure everything is looking the way it should do. So we'll come back to our home page. We'll force refresh this. Now, obviously, you know, you are going to have some kind of browser caching going on as well. So that is going to have a little bit of an impact upon how you see things on here. We'll come back in and take a look at some of the final things I want to look at. Preload. We're not going to look at advanced database or CDN because at this point in time, we're not using a CDN. You could do, and I would highly recommend that you do use a CDN, but a lot of us may not even know how to do this kind of thing.
Okay, so we've done the media side of things. Let's just quickly come down to the image optimization and take a look what we have inside you. As you can see, they, they want us to sort of grab Imageify and we don't have that that's available to us. And I'm gonna keep that sort of side of things out of this just so we can sort of just stick with the plugin itself and see what it's doing. Okay, preload. Preload cache. When you enable preload in WP Rock, it will generate the cache starting with the links on your homepage followed by the sitemaps you specify. Preloading is automatically triggered when you add or update content and you can also be manually triggered from the admin bar. So you can see this is automatically activated when you install the plugin and you can say activate sitemap based cache preloading. So if you're using a sitemap, which you should be, especially if you're using some kind of SEO tools, you can activate that. And you can see it says rank math XML sitemap. It knows we've got rank math inside there. So we just check that option. And you can again, sitemap for preloading. You can specify what you want to preload. DNS requests, we're gonna leave that. Like I say, most users are gonna be like, oh, I don't know what a DNS is. Preload fonts. So you can improve performance by helping browsers discover fonts in CSS files. So you can see we can, if we want to, get this to preload the CSS files. We leave that as it is though. And let's just say we're gonna leave it there. Just make sure we save any changes we've made. And then finally, we're gonna come up, once those saves, those changes, come to our dashboard and clear our cache out completely. Okay, so with those settings done, saved and everything updated, Let's try GT metrics one more time. Again, we're gonna do a three time test on this, but I'll do this the first time on camera so you can see the results as we go through things. Now, like I say, I've only kind of gone through what I think the average user would feel comfortable testing out when they're configuring and tweaking something like WP Rocket, because I think you need to have a good understanding of quite a lot of the terminology that's being used to test things out. And bang, there we go, that's already quite a significant difference in quite a few of those different things. So we've now jumped up from 71 and 89 on our page speed and Y score, Y slow score respectively to 98 and 92. That's a pretty significant jump. Fully load time, still sitting around the same thing. But like I say, this can be influenced by so many different factors and GD metrics isn't always the best indicator of this. A lot of the time it's a case of testing things out across multiple different sort of testing sites like GT Metrics, Pingdom, and all those kinds of things to get a, a real feel for it. But you can see we have dropped over half a megabyte, almost half a megabyte off our total page size by caching those images. And our requests are down from 64 to 21. And as you can see, minimize redirects, defer passing, all these things are giving us decent results. So what I'm going to do now is off camera, I'm going to make a note of these scores. I'm going to run this two more times so we can get that mean average with those updates in place with WP Rocket. But initially, the results do look pretty good with minimal tweaking. Okay, so the WP Rocket results are in. Looking pretty good. Like I say, not too bad at all. The thing that kind of is the biggest change in factor, or the only real change in factor, on the retests is the fully load time. And that's kind of ranged between 1.4 seconds, to two seconds. So if you take the highest of those, the two seconds, that's still pretty respectable and falls inside what is the recommended time scale for most places. And I think if you were using a CDN alongside this, you definitely benefit from even better results because then anybody that's in a different country would have most of the key things like the image files, the JavaScript files, and all those kind of things will be delivered from a CDN server close to them. But I think WP Rocket has definitely come back with a good result. And I think for many people, this is something that you could almost just click, set, forget. So that's WP Rocket. Next up, we're gonna take a look at auto-optimize. So before we move on to auto-optimize, let me just quickly explain what I'm doing between each of these installs. I take a completely clean backup of this using WP Vivid Backup Pro. So there's a clean copy prior to installing any cache in plugin, includes the database, includes everything for the site. Then between each one, I'm gonna restore that back to the same point, install the caching plugin fresh into that fresh copy of the site. So each time we're starting with the same setup. So just so you know, there's no sort of just wiping out the plugin, adding another plugin in there and so on, where we kind of might get problems with cached files and things like that. This is a complete clean copy. Each individual time I install this plugin. So there we go. That's how we're going to do it. Okay, so I'm going to do that behind the scenes so you don't have to sit here and watch me do it. But I just wanted to explain that before we move on 
so I don't have to go through each time and you wonder what's going on behind the scenes. So next on the list is Auto Optimize. This time it's a free plugin, but one I have covered on the channel before, and I've used various different times when I've got situations where paying for an optimization and cash-in plugin isn't on the cards. So let's take a look at Auto Optimize and see exactly how that fares in our testing. So like we did before, we're going to go into our plugin section and add a new plugin. And from there, we're just going to search for this inside the dashboard because this is a nice free plugin. So if you don't want to have any expense when you work with auto optimize, oh, sorry, when you want to work with any kind of optimization caching tools, auto optimize is definitely one worth taking a look at. I've used this quite successfully on a few different tutorials and a few different websites of my own. It's definitely worth taking a look at. So let's install that. Once that's installed, we'll then go and take a look once it's activated at the options we have available. Okay, so let's activate that. Once that's activated, we can take a look at the settings. Now I'm going to do the same as I did with WP Rocket. I'm going to run a test with just auto optimize installed with whatever default settings it comes out of the box with. And also we'll then take a look at what we can tweak. So let's just close all these nag messages down and then we're ready to go and take a look at the options. You can see we have a new section at the top that says auto optimize, tells us our cache size and all those kinds of things and deleting the cache and so on. So if we go in and auto optimize, you can see this is what we kind of start off with. It's a much simpler kind of, I can't say cleaner interface to WP Rocket, but it is definitely a lot less information, but also not quite visually so nice. Okay, so this is the starting point with pretty much nothing being done to it. So let's go over to GT Metrics. Let's do our usual. Let's just go back to a fresh page. We'll drop in the URL for the site. And what we'll do then is we'll just take a look at testing it. Okay, let's analyze this. So again, we're using all the same settings, same server location, all those kinds of things. And this is one of those things that if you use GT Metrics, it is quite nice to just sign up for the free account. Then you can just save the settings. And every time you log in, you're going to be using all the same settings. Okay, so we're getting closer to the final report and we'll see what we start off with. Okay, so this is where we are. As you can see, this is pretty much exactly what it was when we just had the clean stock site, nothing else installed. So it looks like auto optimize straight out of the box doesn't really do anything to your site. It doesn't touch it at all. So let's go into auto optimize and let's just take a little look at what we have inside this. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to run the tests on this because this is, like I say, it doesn't seem to be doing anything whatsoever. It seems to be back to stock what we had with the site to start off with. Okay, so let's just say optimize JavaScript code. Once we do that, you can see we have some similar options to what we had inside WP Rocket. Now we've got aggregate the JS files. So this will aggregate all linked JavaScript files to have them loaded non-render block in. If this is a, if this option is off, the individual JS files will remain in place, but will be minified. Again, make sure that you test these things that when you make changes, test things to make sure that everything is working and doesn't cause a problem on your site. So we'll do the same as we did before. We're going to just set the JavaScript options. We'll test to make sure everything works. Then we'll move on to the next one. So let's just say also aggregate inline JavaScript. Force JavaScript ahead, so load JavaScript early. This can potentially fix some JS errors, but makes the JS render block in. We're going to leave that off. And then we've got add try catch wrapping. If your script breaks because of a JS error, you might want to try this. So if you do find you have issues with your site, if you use these options, then you can come back in and try some of these alternatives. And there is a certain amount of trial and error with whatever caching software you use, because there are so many variables, your site, the tools you use on it, the plugins, you know, the setup of your server, the type of server, all those kinds of things will play a part in how well these different tools will work. Okay, so let's just say we're happy with that. We're going to say save the changes and empty the cache. So we're starting off with a nice clean version. Come back over to our site. We'll just refresh this page. Just make sure everything is working as it should do. So everything looks good on there. We'll take a look at one of the recipes to make sure everything is loading correctly on there. And finally, we'll come to our recipe section where we've got our filters and we'll just make sure that all our filters are all still working. And there we go. Everything looks good. So everything seems to be working fine. So let's come back in now. We're going to try the CSS option. So we'll enable optimizing CSS. And again, you can see we have similar options what we had with the JavaScript, aggregating inline CSS, those kinds of things. We've also got things like generate data URLs for images. So enable this option to include small background images in the CSL itself 
instead of separate image downloads. So if you are using small graphics to create background textures and things, this could definitely help speed up things. It will cache those kinds of things and put those into separate, you know, into the CSS and so on. Uh, okay, inline and defer CSS. Inline above the full CSS while loading the main auto-optimized CSS only after page load. Check the FAQ for more info. This can be fully automated for different types of pages on the critical CSS tab. We're going to go, like I say, with what most of us that don't really get in there and start messing around with these things and have a great understanding of all these different technologies, what well, most people would just check to see if it works. Okay, inline CSS. It's an easy way to stop CSS from being render blocking, but it's generally not recommended because of the size of the HTML. Well, we'll leave that as it is. Okay, so again, save, cache, and empty. Come back over. We'll refresh this. Make sure that everything is looking good. Like I say, I'm only going to fly through this quite quickly just so we can see that everything is in place and working as it should do. Okay, we're looking good on there. That's okay. Happy with that. Let's come back over now to our HTML. So optimize our HTML code. Keep HTML comments. Enable this if you want HTML comments to remain in the page. I don't really care. It's not something I've set up myself. So we can ignore that. Empty and save. Okay, so what else do we have available? CDN options. We're not testing a CDN. Like I say, that is something that I would highly recommend that you do include on a live site. But for this example, we're going to keep this fairly straightforward. Cache info, this just gives us some information about it. And then we've got miscellaneous options. And again, read through those. Experimental enable 404 fallbacks, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're going to leave that as if we're going to say this is some basic setup. Let's go and take a look at the images option. And inside there, we can say we can optimize and we can lazy load images. Lazy loading, I would always recommend you do, especially with quite image intensive sites. Optimize images, say if you have a short pixel account, so you can say we can click to optimize that and this will then use the short pixel sort of setup. Automatically serve next gen WebP images, format in browser, blah, blah, blah. It's up to you if you want to do it. Image optimization quality, we have lossy, glossy, and lossless. Glossy is going to give us a sort of a middle of the road kind of thing. Depends on the kind of image you're doing, depends on the kind of site. Lossy is going to give you the best compression and therefore the best saving in quality, sorry, best saving in speed and so on. Glossy is kind of just going to give a small amount of compression. We'll leave it set to glossy for this example. Because we're dealing with images that are photographs with lots of details, you can find if you go too heavy on the compression, they can start to look a little bit ropey. So we're going to leave those as they are. And other than that, we're just going to leave it as it is. So we'll save the changes on there. Let that go and do its job. Now this will probably run in the background to deal with those images for us. Critical CSS, what do we have inside there? Okay, so we need an API key. So we're going to leave that as it is. And the extra section. So this is where you kind of have just a few kind of fall outside the basics, should we say. Google fonts, do you want to leave them as is? Do you want to remove Google fonts, which obviously if you rely upon Google fonts for your site, you wouldn't want to do that. And you have some other options. I'm going to leave them as they are. Remove the emojis, yes please. Remove query strings from static sources. So this removes the query strings or more specifically the version parameter. Now this is something that you can see pop up quite a lot when it comes to your results inside GT metrics. It's not generally recommended you use those. So we're going to say we want to remove those. We're not going to worry about pre-connecting to third-party domains or preloading specific requests or anything else. We're just going to say save the changes. Okay, so we're ready now to run our first test. So let's just drop the domain in there. Let's hit analyze. And again, I'm just going to do this on camera so you can see exactly what's going on. You can see the results as they come in for the first time, the same as I can. Now, this is one of those areas, again, like I say, there can be some testing just to make sure that everything works the way it expects and also you know, to get the best results. Okay, so that's not looking quite so good as what we saw when we were working with WP Rocket. You can see our page score has kind of improved a little bit. Our Y slow has definitely improved. Our fully loaded time is three seconds, which is quite high. We have dropped a little bit in page size and our requests have come down. Okay, let me run that test now a couple more times so we can get those results in and I can log those results into the spreadsheet test. And we may find that because we hadn't loaded the page, we hadn't cached the images because you can see you're saying serve scales images. 
I don't know. We'll have to take a little look and see what we get on the next run through. But I'll run through those now and we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so the initial set of results are in and we are still looking at around 2.8 to 3 seconds for the fully loaded time. Not brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the auto optimize options. We're going to go into the images section and this time we're going to optimize these for lossy, save our changes, clear our cache out, load the page for the first time. And we're going to take a look then to see if that makes a noticeable difference to the load time. So let's come back over to our site. We'll refresh this, make sure that we have a clear cache. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go and take a look at a couple of pages just so I can load things in. And you can see where the images are flashing. We are seeing that that lazy load is in fact doing its job, which is only loading things in when we need them on the page as opposed to being loaded in the background all the time. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. Now we'll refresh this and we should find the cache now shows us, there we go, just under seven megabytes. So let's do the same again. Let's just run a simple test. So we're gonna come up, GT metrics, drop in the URL, hit analyze on there. And let's see if setting those to be a heavier compression will make much of a change. We should see a difference in the total page size, I would have thought. Hopefully that will then reflect in better values in the load time as well. So there we go. So we're seeing a little bit of an improvement. The page speed is improved slightly. The total page size is down probably about just over 100K. Fully loaded time, not great if I'm honest. There's a little bit of a time save. But what we're gonna do, I'll run through another two times so we can get that mean average with those settings. But so far, WP Rocket is definitely coming out in front with the first two tests. Okay, so with all the results back in, what I can say is that auto optimizing this example is not faring particularly well. If I'm honest, it's actually increasing the load time to the site without any kind of caching on it. So that's not a good thing. But like I say, your mileage definitely may vary. And depending upon if you're using a CDN, you should again see better results. Now it is worth bearing in mind if you are going to use a CDN alongside something like auto optimize, where you've got the CDN options for the base URL. If you're using Cloudflare, you don't have an option for a base URL. You have to do, you have to change the name servers to point your domain to the Cloudflare servers. It's not difficult, it's pretty easy to do, but you do have to do that. And that's different to what you might find with other CDNs you could potentially use alongside this. Next on the list is Nitro Pack. Now, Nitro Pack is a little different to some of the things we've taken a look at so far. This is more of a global kind of service type thing that has a WordPress plugin associated with it so we can tap in and use the facilities and tools that Nitro Pack offers. It is the most expensive service throughout the entire testing that we're going to do today. So you'd have to weigh up the performance this may give you to the price that you'd have to pay and see if you think it's something that's viable for you. So Nitro Pack is by far the most expensive option available and probably most users that are going to be viewing this probably wouldn't be plumbing for this particular set of tools. However, it's in here because I think it's worth taking a look at. If you have a site that's actually making money and you want it to be the fastest possible when using WordPress or basically any other kind of site, because I don't think this is WordPress specific, this may be the option. So we're going to test this out anyway, but bear in mind, I've never used this. This is the first time I've looked at it. So I'm using the free option, which gives me limited sort of traffic and I have to have a, a, a sort of graphic and things on the site. But that's, that's perfectly fine. That allows me to at least test things out and come back with some feedback on how I think this fares. Now, okay, I've gone ahead, I'm gonna install the Nitro Pack plugin. Once that's installed, then we've got to link that through to the account. So we'll activate this. And once that's activated, we'll take a look at what settings we have to play with. So let's take a look at the settings option. As you can see, I'm on the free plan, which gives me, like I say, pretty minimal amounts of like optimizations and things along those lines. But anyway, that should give us an idea. So what do we have? We have the optimization mode, the automated behavior and all those kinds of things. So I literally have nothing configured inside here whatsoever. So you can see we can further configure how NitroPack's optimizations behave throughout the account using our account details. So if we come back into our account, we can take a look at various different things. So there's our site, you can see it's telling us it's optimized for mobile and also for desktop. 
And what else do we have? We have our settings section inside here, which we can come in and we can adjust our configuration. So they put strong is the default straight out of the box kind of configuration, but you can hop this up to ludicrous or you can go to manual. But they do say with the ludicrous option, there is the potential there to have issues with your site. So it's worth bearing in mind that you could see some degraded performance or some errors if you're not careful. Okay, so we'll quickly just have a look through, see what's in here. And you can see things like caching AJAX URLs, caching CSS, and so on. But let's just take a quick spin first of all to see if just the default settings make any difference. So everything is all set up inside there. Okay, we are looking good. Let's come over to our performance. Now they do say you should allow at least sort of five minutes before you start testing things with things like GT metrics. So we're going to do just that. We're just going to give this a few minutes before we run the test just to make sure that we've given it a time to connect up to our site and do whatever it needs to before we go in and take a look at tweaking. And they also do recommend that you should leave longer between any tweaked settings before you test again. We'll take a look at that as well. Okay, we've given it a few minutes now. We're ready to run our first performance test using Nitro Pack with the default straight at the box setting. So we'll just drop in the URL and hit analyze on there. Now, like I say, this is one of those areas that if you are making money off your site or you just intend to make money off it, you want the best performing caching option to get the fastest site to minimize sort of traffic loss, to mis minimize potential loss in sales. So, you know, it comes down to the money that you're potentially going to make to the money that you spend. And as you can see, that's pretty impressive performance values across the page speed and the Y slow score. That's pretty good. However, you will see the fully load time is 1.6 seconds, which still isn't amazingly quick compared to the straight out of the box with no plugins installed. You know, there's, there's something to be said for a well-optimized site to start off with. However, like I say, you look at the file size, 1.41 megabytes, not much of a saving, less than sort of, well, less than 100K to be honest. 45 requests as opposed to its initial 65, but, you can't really deny the page performance scores and this should also fare pretty well inside Google ranking. So it would be interesting to take a look at that as a separate thing in comparison to this, just to see how that kind of fares. Okay, so that's our initial scores, looking pretty good. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time in between. I'm gonna run this test another two times and then we'll go and take a look at what we can tweak and if we'll stick it up to that sort of ludicrous performance score and see what that brings to us and if everything works okay. Okay, I've run all three tests and we're ranging between 1.6 seconds and 0.9 seconds when it comes to performance for fully loaded time. All three of those values are excellent and below that two second average that you really want to avoid getting any higher than. You will notice something though that we are by default using a CDN that's part of this particular service. So you are benefiting from the CDN side of things, whereas with the other ones we've taken a look at, we're not really using any form of CDN. So you can see it's user content delivery network. Yes, it's definitely using that, expires headers and so on. So it is incredibly good straight out of the box with no tweaking whatsoever. Now, before we finish with this, let's take a look at just boosting this. Let's come back over to our options. We're in strong mode. Let's just, take this up to ludicrous and see what happens. See if everything works or whether we just have a bit of a problem. Let's just come back up and oh, actually we should be done. That should be all we need to do with it, I think. Like I say, I'm pretty new to this as well. So we're gonna purge our cache and we should be a completely clear site. Come back over, let's just test our site to make sure it is still working. Okay, homepage is looking good. If we go and take a look at one of the recipes, you can see everything is loading in perfectly fine on there. And finally, we'll jump over to the recipe section. Just test out our filters to make sure that's working. Okay, so everything is looking like it's working. Let's come back over to GT Metrics. Start a fresh setup on there. And we'll analyze this now and see if we see any improvement over our initial findings. Like I say, the initial findings were pretty impressive straight out of the box anyway, especially when it comes to the, the load time. It is definitely sitting as one of the best across the entire board so far. So that's pretty good to see. Okay, we're almost there. There we go. 
Okay, so we're seeing that we're actually getting detrimental effect to it. Let's just run a retest just to make sure that the cache is all set up and working. But as it is, that's looking like it's gone back up to its initial setup prior to installing any kind of caching software. So that's a little bit weird. I wasn't expecting that to happen. But we'll run through a second test just to make sure that it wasn't something kind of weird going on. And if it is, we'll just put it back to what it was. Okay, so we need it. I'm generating a report. There we go. So that looks a little better to my eyes. We're still getting the same page score on the Y slow score, but we are getting a better fully loaded time. And we're definitely seeing a big difference in the total page size and the number of requests. We dropped down almost one meg on the total page size and we're about a third of the requests. So that is definitely pretty impressive for sure. Come back over and what else do we have? Cache warmup and HTML compression. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound, as they say, let's just pop on the HTML compression and let's enable this. So enable a cache warm up, use 28 page optimizations. Would you like to continue? Yeah, I'm only testing things out. So we'll say, yes, we will, please. Let's just see what that does. So enables the warm up. So we've taken it up to ludicrous and we've done these other settings. We'll purge our cache again. Now we may need to run this twice just in case we get some kind of weird glitchy performance for values that you saw the other time. But let's come back in, let's just start a completely fresh test and we'll run this test now, analyze this, see where we go from there. So I'm kind of excited to see where this takes us, if this gives us a better result again, or whether we don't see such a great result at all. But so far, I'm definitely pretty impressed by Nitro Pack and I can understand why a lot of people are saying this is the one they think is gonna come out on top on the Facebook group. So, almost there. Okay, generating row report. And again, one of those kind of weird results. Let's retest this just to see if it's just a cache. It needs to refresh that cache, needs to fill that cache up. You know, those kind of strange things that if nothing's being, no one's visiting the site, the cache isn't being created and generated, the files are not being auto-optimized, those kinds of things. So we'll just take a little look and see where we go from here. Okay, nearly there. Yep, so not so great. Uh, I'm kind of surprised at that, if I'm brutally honest. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly run through this test three times. I'm gonna go and just move around the site a couple of times just to make sure that everything is being cached correctly. Okay, so I'd run one or two final tests on there. And as you can see, performance is definitely not as good as it was before we enabled those options. So I take those back off, run those three tests, see what we get as the mean average now with the tweaked version. And this just goes to show that you have to test things out to see what gives you good results at any given point when you're working with any form of caching software, plugin, service, or anything else. So just bear that in mind, test, 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 and just check those results and then repeat. Okay, so let me just run through these tests now and see what we get as the results with the tweaked version. So with a little bit more testing, I can see the Nitro Pack with the ludicrous setting definitely comes back with a slightly better result. Total page size is definitely the big sort of saver here. It is down by two thirds. Requests again by two thirds. Fully loaded time is not that dissimilar to the default setting with Nitro Pack. So if you don't want to get in and tweak or you find you have some slight issues, you're not going to see a massively noticeable difference between the ludicrous setting, with my setup at least, and the, the normal sort of straight out of the box setting. So either way, it is still a fantastic result and overall is definitely coming out as one of the ones on top out of all the ones we've tested so far. Okay, so this time to reset our website one more time. Okay, so next on the list is Swift Performance. We're going to take a look at this, test it out, and see how this fares against the first couple of plugins and services that we've tested out so far, and see how it stacks up in both the price and also the feature set. Okay, so once we install Swift Performance, we have a couple of options. I'm going to go for the auto config first of all, and then we'll take a look at what options we have to tweak afterwards. So let's hit the auto config option. Let that run through any wizard. So please note that if you run the wizard, it will reset the current settings to the default. That's perfectly fine. We're on a completely clean setup anyway. So let's start that and see what it's going to do. So nice thing is this is going to go through and just check everything for us, make sure everything is working exactly as it should do. Okay, so there we go. We'll hit next on there. So your website is ready. You can check advanced settings, also to improve your results if you need any help, blah, blah, blah. So we've got optimized images, Swift performance settings, or Swift performance dashboard. 
let's optimize the images because I think this is probably something that most people would probably think, let's just do that at the bare minimum. So let's optimize images and see what we have there. Okay, so this is a feature requires a valid purchase key. So unfortunately, we've got to go through and set things up on a valid purchase key. So we'll just leave that as it is. Take a look at the dashboard. What do we have inside there? Okay. So this is giving us the basic info. So we've done we've done the wizard. Let's just test it out and see what we get results wise. Come to our dashboard and do the same thing again. We're going to drop in our domain, hit analyze on there, and see what our initial results come back from using Swift Performance. Okay, so there's our initial results by using Swift Performance, and not too bad at all. We're getting a good page speed and Y slow score. Our fully loaded time is pretty respectable with that sub two seconds at 1.4. Page size down by about 500K, which again is a good substantial state saving. And our request is down by probably around about 65 to 70%. So that's pretty impressive straight out of the gate with no tweaking whatsoever. So I'm quite surprised at how good that's actually come out. So what I'm going to do now is, like I say, I'm going to do the same as usual, run through the three tests. So we got a mean average, and then we'll go take a look at what we can tweak and see if we can just eke a little bit more out of this, if there's any options in there that allow us to just fine tune and tweak just that little bit extra. So I'm going to run through these tests, and then I'll come back and we'll move on and take a look at what we can tweak. Okay, if we jump into the settings, you can see under our dashboard, this gives us some basic information. The number of pages, the cache pages, cache size, threads, and so on. We've also got Swift Performance at the top, which we can do things like image optimizer, database optimizer, and so on. We can run the setup wizard again if we want to. So if we've made some changes, we could potentially put that back to the beginning. However, if we come into, for example, you can see we've got all the different pages listed there. If we come into the settings section, this will give us the basic simple overview. And you can see we can just change this between simple and advanced views. If we just take a look at advanced, you can see it gives us a lot of additional options. However, like I say, we're keeping this under the simple section for most people that would feel comfortable making some simple changes. Okay, so what do we have? We don't want anything under the general section. Under tweaks, you can see normalized static resources, gravatar cache, Custom HT access, if we're using Google Analytics, which lots of people will be, you can choose to bypass that. But most people are probably going to come into the media and the optimization side of things. So let's come and take a look at media. We've got the image optimizer. We've got lossless, slightly lossy, moderate, and aggressive. And obviously, depending upon the type of images you have, and if you're using this image optimizer, you can choose which you think is going to work best. I would be careful if you're using lots of photographs. They are large in file size, but too much compression, like I said earlier, can lead to just making them look really, really poor. So it's be, just be careful with that. So you can see we've got help by the side of any one of these. You can see this can use a, you can use a preset or fine tune image quality manually. The other thing we have is keep original images. So if you are using optimization and you are testing things out, the last thing you'd want to do is to lose the original images and have no way of restoring them. This just enables, and it's enabled by default, to keep a backup copy of the original unedited, uncompressed images that you've uploaded originally. So I would generally recommend to keep the original images if you're going to run any kind of optimization. But bear in mind that is going to increase the space and storage you're going to require on your site. You can let it generate WebP images, and again, up to use you if you want to, and then you can choose to serve them if you want. So you can come in and fine tune and tweak. I'm not going to go through too much detail. Lazy load is definitely something we want on there. And that's basically the image side of things. If we come to optimization, we've got things like enable server push, blah, 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 optimize in the background. So if you have a lot of optimization going on and you don't want to have a massive impact on your server, especially on shared hosting, you could say to optimize in the background and this will then just do it in the background for you. Minify HTML. I've kind of found that's a little hit and miss. I do tend to find that sometimes I lose parts of my site if I enable that. So for this example, I'm going to, for this test, I'm going to leave that unminified. Okay, so you've got some other things then for disabling emojis and so on and styles and scripts. Under caching, we've got then things like general, we can tweak things, exceptions, warm up, varnish if you want to use that, if your server has that installed, which I believe Cloudways installs varnish as part of that, which you can enable if you want to. 
Okay, so what we're going to take a look at though is this image optimizer because I think this is probably one of the easiest ways of optimizing things. So let's come into the image optimizer. We'll leave that. That's fine. And you can see this is telling us we currently have about 3.69 megabytes of images. So what we can do is we can come down and we can select all the images. So we can say optimize all images. So you can say optimize all. Let that run through and provide, depending upon the settings you have configured, you'll see a difference. So you can see this is queuing those images up and slowly going through those to do what it needs to do to compress those images and, and set things up. And this will then run through, tell us how many images we've got, how many have been optimized, the original size and the current size, and how much we've actually saved from there. So again, it's one of those things that's quite useful. You've also got delete original images. So if you're happy with the optimizations that have been taking place and you're happy with the end results, you could delete those original images if you didn't mind losing them. Okay, so what I would say about Swift Performance is that with the basic settings, you don't really have a huge amount of control over what to change. You have to start digging into the advanced views before you see some of the things that we're seeing in several of these other plugins. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm not gonna run any performance tests anymore there because I don't really feel like I've tweaked anything. And the initial scores were, were pretty decent. Image Optimizer saved us a little bit of file space. You can see about, uh, about 100K if that. So it's not gonna make a real noticeable difference on the low speed. So Swift Performance straight out of the box with no real tweaking, still give pretty decent results. Not the best, but still pretty decent. So Swift Performance, it's up there with some of the decent contenders. Now we're moving on to WP Super Cache. I'm interested to see how this one fares because this is again, another one of those free options. And a lot of times people don't have the cash to spend or splash out on caching and speeding up their website. So I'm interested to kind of see how this one stacks up against the competition. Next on our list is WP Super Cache, which is by the same developers behind WordPress itself. So let's take a look what this gives us. I've already gone ahead, installed this, and as you can see, by default, it's turned off. So all we're gonna do is enable our caching, update our status, provided everything else is in place, we should be good to go with the basics. Now you can see we've got easy, advanced CDN contents, preload plugins and debugs. So we have a range of different options across the top for what we can do. Easy, for example, well, just basically gives us what we are on at the moment, advanced, we take a look on there. This gives us a little bit more control. And as you can see, we've got cash delivery method. We've got simple, which is recommended for people who don't really know what they're doing too well. And expert, which will obviously open up more options. So you can see expert caching requires changes to important server files and may require manual intervention if enabled. So if you don't really know what you're doing, best to stay away from that one. Okay, so we have a range of different things in there, but I'm not gonna change any of these or even look at them right now. We're simply gonna go and test this on GT metrics. So let's come back over, do a clean test on there, and let's just test this out. So I'm gonna come over, just make sure I've got the address all ready, drop that into there, and we'll run an analysis on this. Now I've never used WP Super Cache, so I have no idea what to expect, and whether it's one of those ones that is worth installing comparatively to things like WP Rocket, Auto Optimize, you know, those kinds of things, Nitro Pack and so on. So what are we getting straight out of the box? Not a huge amount, if I'm brutally honest. Exactly the same as we had other than the fully loaded time compared to a completely clean site. So nothing really going on too much inside this. Let's go back to the cache settings. Let's just take a little look at what we have. Okay, so if we're back on the easy section, so let's just take a look. Test cache. Just give that a test run and see what we come up with. So like I say, you are seeing this as I'm going through it, so I don't really know too much about it. And everything comes back as okay. We're all looking pretty good. See, caching is only one part of making, yeah, we know that. Okay, so let's have a look at the advanced section, see what we have inside here. Enable caching for all visitors. Disable caching for logged in visitors. Let's just say we want to enable it for everybody. Disable caching for visitors who have a cookie set in the browser. Don't cache pages with a get parameter. Compress pages so they serve more quickly to visitors. You kind of think you'd want to do that. So we'll say yes to that. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Enable dynamic caching, mobile device support. Clear all cache files where a post is published. So let's have a little look. What else we got? Cache location. We can leave that as it is. And what do we have down here? This is just the expiry time and garbage collection for 
how long your cash actually stays inside the cache. Accepted file name and rejected URLs. Do not cache the following page types. So it's quite nice to see that you can choose different kinds of page types to not cache. You may have certain things that you want to have a live version every single time. Okay, what do we have inside here? Okay, and everything else I think is probably where we want to be. So let's just take a look at updating this, make sure that everything is saved. Just check everything is saved on it. Mm, here we go. Okay, CDN, we don't have a CDN setup. And like I say, if you're using something like Cloudflare, that's the one, Cloudflare, you have to do that on the name server level. Uh, so we won't enable CDN support on this one. So we are, we are going to see a difference in quality contents. So what do we have inside here? Uh, okay, nothing much there. Preload. And uh, what we got inside there? Preload mode, garbage collection disabled, preload tags. Okay, so in all honesty, I'm not really blown away by what we have available inside you. It seems to be very much a case of you have what you have and you have some control over things. So we come over to our site, make sure everything is working as it should do. And what we'll do is then we'll just run those three tests and see what we get as a result. I'm not feeling too optimistic about WP Super Cache. This may be down to my lack of knowledge when it comes to using it. That's perfectly, you know, sort of viable option. Okay, let's just run those tests then. So we'll retest and we'll let this run through for the first test and see what we get out of it. I'm not gonna hold my breath too much. The first set of results are in. And as you can see, it's still saying the same thing again. We've got the page speed score of 71%, Y slow of 89%. The only thing that's an improvement over the version of the site with no caching installed is the fully load time, which obviously is a positive thing. So I'm going to run this two more times, make a note of all the different values that we have, the results. And I think we'll leave WP Super Cache where it is based upon those quite poor results. Like I say, if I've done something wrong, missed something out, by all means in the comments section, let me know. You've been an idiot kind of thing, and you should have done this. You should have done X, Y, and Z to get good results out of this. And I'm perfectly open to those suggestions. So by all means, like I say, let me know in the comment section if you think I just missed something out while quickly breezing over this particular plugin for caching. Okay, so that's all the testing completed. And I think it's safe to say that while, you know, WP Super Cache didn't do an amazing job. It did make a significant difference in the fully loaded time, taking the site with no kind of caching available on it from 2.3 to 2.5 seconds down to, on average, about 1.7 to 1.8 seconds. So it's still sub two seconds. So it hasn't done a bad job. It just doesn't give you the same kind of control that you have when you're working with some of the other plugins that we've taken a look at so far, so far in this testing. So would I choose this one? Probably not, but you've seen it, it's been included. So last on our list is WP Optimizer, and this is the premium version. So again, I've paid for this out of my own pocket to test this out and bring you the results. So I'm interested to see how this stacks up because they do make some bold claims about how good this plugin is. I've seen several different people say it is a plugin worth checking out. So I'm really interested to see how this stacks up against the competition, both the free versions, the services, and also the paid options. So let's take a look at WP Optimizer Premium. Okay, so just purchased a copy of WP Optimize, set my account up and everything else. I've also gone ahead, installed the plugin and activated it. So we are ready to go if we take a look at the options for this. So there's WP Optimize. Let's just hit the Optimize settings. I say, okay, optimize that. So what do we have? Loading data. So we've got optimizations, tables, and settings. We can, if we want to, run through all the optimizations. Some of these have warnings to say an items marked with the icon perform more intensive database operations. In very rare cases, if your database server happened to crash or be forcibly powered down at the same time as the optimization operation was running, data might be corrupted. You may wish to run a backup before optimizing. Well, I've got a backup in place already. So let's just say, let's hit all of those, run all selected optimizations, and we'll find out, I suppose, if this decides to crash during the optimization process. But we'll let this run through its optimizations and hopefully everything will work perfectly fine. As you can see, being part of the Updraft Plus software company, we could, if we had Updraft Plus installed, take a backup before doing this. So you can see they're definitely linking things together to, you know, make sure that you have all the software installed. Okay, 
There's no schedule optimization, schedule clean and disabled. Okay, let's just, did that even run? Let's just run those again. Let's just check to see if everything worked okay. And I have no idea. Let's just let this run through and see what it's going to do. Okay, this may take a little longer now. It looks like it is actually running this time. So we'll let that run through. And once it's finished, we'll come back and take a quick look at what this kind of comes back with. Okay, so there we are. Let's run that GT Metrics performance test then and see what kind of results we get from it. So let's copy that GT Metrics and analyze. Now I will say straight out of the box, that doesn't seem that intuitive to see exactly what you need to do. It says optimize and then there's just a pile of checkboxes that once you check them, and you run that optimization, it just leaves them checked and doesn't really say much about it. Again, it could totally be me not understanding what's going on with it because I am literally going through this at the same time as you're seeing it. So across the board, we're seeing exactly the same thing with fully loaded time being even higher than it was with just a clean site. So before I run this in any real kind of way, let's just take a look. Let's come over to the images then, for example. Show compression, Metabox, what do we want to do? Compress images, uncompressed images. So, okay. So let's just say prioritize retention of details. We've got some advanced options and we can choose what we want to use. Preserve exif data and not too bothered. Backup original files, we should say, yes, you want to do that. Um, okay, so I'm definitely thinking this is not the most intuitive setup whatsoever compared to some of the other options we have okay mark all the images as uncompressed you really want to mark them no i don't um yeah i don't really know what's going on how to use the image compression feature unused images and sizes this action is irreversible if you don't have a backup so we don't want to delete anything from there lazy load uh, images iframes and videos yes we'll save the settings on there we do want a lazy load Let's take a look at our cache options. Enable page caching, absolutely. Otherwise, we're not really going to get much use out of this. Generate separate files for mobile, no. Serve cache pages to logged in users. Entirely up to you if you want to go ahead or not. Save our changes on there. Preload, what do we have? This action will trigger WP Optimize to cache the site by visiting pages to preload them. Uh, yep, let's run that. Activate schedule cache preloading. This schedule preloading will run automatically in your chosen time period. So I suppose you can set up how often you want this to run in the background for you. Uh, okay, so two out of 16 URLs preloaded. Let that finish off with those all 16. Nice thing is the site isn't massive. There's only 16 pages, as you can see, that's front facing on there. So that's not too bad. Well, we're nearly there. Okay, one more page to go. There we go, okay. Advanced settings, exclude from caching. Don't worry about those, that's fine. GZIP compression, yeah, let's still say that's enabled. Static file headers, okay. And minify, do you want to enable minify? Yep, yeah, let's enable that. So we can see we can process the HTML, the JavaScript and the CSS. So that's, that's all you have inside there. You can come into the settings and we can see we do have some extra options so contain each individual file in its own block. Enable if trying to isolate a JavaScript error. Okay. Okay, nothing too untoward in there. Say CSS is pretty much the same thing as well. Fonts, settings. Uh, okay. Advanced. Okay, we'll let those, we'll save those. We'll jump onto the site. Like I say, I do get some issues sometimes with HTML minification. So we'll refresh the page just to check everything is working okay. One of the areas that tend to find is a bit quirky uh as you can see the filters disappear so we come back into this come back into a minify status and we'll uncheck the minify html reset the minified files and that should automatically save the settings for us let's come back to this refresh our page and as you can see they are back so you can see sometimes you do get issues and that's the kind of issue you could come across and that's why it's worthwhile sitting down and testing your entire site just to make sure that everything is working the way you expect. Okay, so we'll say we're happy with most of the things on there. Uh, we won't worry about the settings, we'll take a look at that separately. So let's come back over to this now and we'll run a fresh test on there. So let's just copy this URL just to make sure I've got that and see if this now makes any real noticeable difference. 
I will say though, I'm not overly impressed with WP Optimize. Yes, I'd probably sit down and take more time to go through and see exactly what's going on and how it all works. But straight out of the box, it certainly doesn't give great results and it certainly isn't, a, doesn't seem polished to me. It doesn't seem as polished as some of the other ones. But great results from a little bit of tweaking. You can see we've definitely improved those results and we're getting probably close to uh, WP Rocket in statistics. Yeah, looking at that, we aren't far off WP Rocket. Fully loaded time is a little lower in some cases. File size and requests is around about the same. So that's a good starting point. But like I say, you did have to get in and tweak some things. So straight out of the box, it's not going to give you results you're going to be blown away by. And if you don't really know what you're doing with this, you could get yourself into a little bit of frustration, a little bit of hot water. So my initial impressions could do better. We'll give it a C plus. Okay, so I'm going to run through this two more times, come back with the results and see where we are. Well, that's the results for WP Optimize in. It gives decent results, I gotta say. Once you get in there and you tweak a little bit, you can get some good results out of it. And it's ranging between 1.9 seconds and 1.3 seconds. What it is kind of saying though, is that it's coming down underneath that two second rule. And I think that's the thing to take away from most of the plugins we've taken a look at today is that they do all come in under two seconds of the load time, except for Auto Optimize, which was pretty poor in this respect. It was ranging from about 2.7 to 3 seconds. So auto optimize in this example, not really in the running. Okay, so that's all those tested. The results are in. Let's take a quick look at those results. And were you surprised by any of these? Were you kind of thinking, well, I thought WP Rocket was going to be the best or Nitro Pack's going to be the best or one of the free options? Let me know what you thought was going to be the number one and if you've been surprised by these results. For me, I would say the Nitro Pack is a great plugin or great service, I should say. But unless you're making money at your website or you really need to eke out every last drop from just a caching plugin, then I would say Nitro Pack is going to be the one for you. However, in this situation, I would probably opt for WP Optimize. It isn't far behind Nitro Pack and it is considerably cheaper. WP Rocket is also another one that's worth taking a look at. And like I say, with some tweaking and setting things up on a server level and making sure that everything is optimized, not just, like I said at the top of the video, slapping on a caching plugin and expecting it to work miracles. I think this is definitely one worth checking out. As always though, let me know your feedback, your results that you've had if you've tested these out and your opinions on everything that I've covered today in that comment section below because I love getting your feedback and seeing what you think. As always, all of the applicable links for everything I've covered in the video are in the description below. My name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.